wherever we go to bring the light into the dark world to be an influence in this world to bring peace wherever there is trouble and to bring light wherever light is needed by our words by our deeds by our very presence by the way that we are that's what he's talking about the world hides many things about man you know there is a superficial charm and manner and culture that conceals what man really is have you ever noticed that superficial charm and culture and manner that conceals what man really is you want to know what man really is listen to two people talking two people meet and talk they're meeting and uh, the guy says one guy says to the other oh what a pleasure it is to meet you i've not seen you in a long time how are you doing how's your wife children and so on and you must come by and we need to get together and i really miss you and all of that after he, and he shakes his hands smiles nicely talks these wonderful words and then he leaves and goes 10 feet away and listen to what he talks about that man listen to what he talks about that man you know why that is uh, why we call people decent is because we have been so taught to behave decently we don't want to pick a fight with anybody we want to shake hands with everybody we just want to be nice we want to smile we say hi how are you doing oh bye you know we just want to get by get through that session you know we want to get over that thing and and go on because we really don't like the guy we don't want to have anything to do with him we actually hate him and uh, but we have been told how to politely behave we've been told and taught that there are some classes conducted for this you know these are life skills they call it life skill is that you don't reveal what you are on the inside but you put on something on the outside you may be sad on the inside but you don't look sad you look happy you smile you may be angry on the inside but you don't look angry you put on a show that you are a calm person you may hate a person on the inside but act like you really love a person this is life skill it's called there are people that go to universities and colleges and learn this and teach it to people you know Uh, that you got to it's it's a makeover outside have you heard of the image makers they take a person and 
project a certain image about that person. That image that they project about that person has nothing to do with the person. You'll be surprised. It has nothing to do. You can take a person that's so dumb, that doesn't know anything, and project him as a brilliant man. The most brilliant man in the whole world. Extraordinary mind, you know, and so on. And you can take the most brilliant man in the world and project him as a dummy. And there are people that are trained to do that, that have companies to do that. Their business is to project a certain image of a person. What kind of image you want? How do you want to project a person? Now, the world has become more and more experts in that. We are experts in covering this stuff, covering the real us, real you, and projecting what is not real. But the Bible is uncovering the real. That's the problem with the Bible. It's like going to the doctor and he scans you, you know. You can say, I feel fine, everything is fine, but he says, lay down here, we'll scan you. And the scan shows everything that you can't see from head to toe. Then they see there's something big like this there inside. You didn't even know, you know. The world is good at covering up. That is why we say, well, people are decent, they don't know. People look, people are taught to behave decently, but do you know there are lusts and pleasures that they are serving like a slave? There may be big people, powerful people, but there are lusts and pleasures that they can't be delivered from. They serve it like a slave. They obey it. They run after it. They do it because they're enslaved by it. There is a power that takes them by the neck and makes them do it, and they obey it. They follow it. They can be big, but they are slaves. We know nothing about it. We say, well, decent person. Of course. They're not going around doing it every, in front of everybody, you know. They're not exhibiting all these things. We are told not to exhibit those things. We are told to exhibit only a good picture. That's the problem. But the Bible is not about exhibition. The Bible is reality. The Bible says the problem with man is this. You see, this is the problem. You come to the Bible, you get the real answer. You know. But people don't want to see the real answer, you know. Two people are fighting at home, husband and wife fighting, pots and pans are flying. And then you ask them what the trouble is, they say, the thing is, brother, she's actually a nice woman. And the woman also says, he's actually a nice guy. There's nothing wrong with the guy. He's a fine guy, really. Then what's the problem? We have an aunt 500 miles away, brother. That aunt is doing some witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> that aunt is doing some witchcraft. From there, from there, she makes us throw all these pots and pans at each other. She makes us fight all the time because of her. We are suffering so much, brother. And there are brothers and sisters available who will come and fast and pray for you so that they can get rid of that till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, then fry some fish. And <laughs> This is the way the world goes, you know. We only see what's we, we, we don't believe the Bible. We don't believe what the Bible says. If you look at the Bible, the Bible will say that the problem is within us. The Samaritan woman came to Jesus, married five times, sixth time she's living with a man, checking him out, whether she should marry him. She's got enough problems, you know. Five times it hasn't worked. If it's only two, three times, you can say maybe the husbands are wrong, you know, some bad guys are out there, you know, and every time she got a bad deal, but this is five times. Then now you take a good look at the woman, you know. Say, Wait a minute, you know. And sixth time, she's now trying out, but she's coming to Jesus and talking all theological problems. You worship, you say you must worship in Jerusalem, but we worship here. Which way is right? 
in this mountain or that mountain? Very important question, you know. <laughs> but Jesus, but Jesus got right down to the point. You read that story, very interesting. Jesus, he gets right down to business immediately. No pulling punches, you know, no beating around the bush. He says, woman, give me something to drink. Why? Because he wants to logically take her to a place where he can talk about this insatiable thirst that's been killing her, destroying her life, making her go from one marriage to another marriage to another marriage to another marriage to another marriage, ever failing in everything that she puts her hand to do. Why? Because there is this dissatisfaction deep in her. There's a problem. There is a difficulty within her. There is some difficulty within her, and she's not able to face it. She's this, she doesn't need theological discussion. She needs somebody that can fix the problem. So all these makeover people, image makeover people, they'll tell you to cover it. They can teach very well to cover it. But you give them a person and tell them to change him, they cannot change him. They can cover what he is and show something else outside. But they cannot change that person's slavery to sin and, and pleasures and all kinds of things. They cannot change that person's envy and all of that. They cannot change that person's character. Cannot. All right. So a person in darkness is like this. More about darkness. When he's in darkness, the Bible says, in verse 11 it says, that person doesn't know where he's going because he's blind. He doesn't know where he's going. Let's look at where, how he doesn't know where he's going. It means that this fellow is controlled by the darkness. If you're in darkness, you really don't know where you're going. That darkness is controlling you. Now you're afraid. Now you don't know. Now you're taking every step hesitantly. You're unsure. Your whole life is uncertain. Everything is unreliable. By chance, you may make it to the right destination, you know. Even his happiness and, every, you know, everything depends upon circumstances. Everything goes well, he's fine. If he meets the right people, he's happy. If he met the wrong person, the whole day is spoiled. That's why some people, when they come out of the house, they don't want to, they want to make sure they face the right person. Because one wrong person they face, the whole day is gone. What a way to live a life, you know. You face one wrong person, is it going to spoil your whole day? You know. I remember one guy, a black cat ran across the street from, you know, when he took his car, he stopped and went inside a house and had some water and then came and took the car again. He said, what's the matter? Because the black cat came, you know. So how does going inside your house and drinking water change everything? That means I didn't start then, I'm only starting now. For me, that's very complicated, difficult for me to, this is very easy, my friend. This is so nice. That is messing me up. I, I just can't live like that, you know. How many glasses of water should you drink to make sure that you're, <laughs> should you not have at least two samosas to make sure that this is when you're leaving? Or should you have an idli and sambar also? Too complicated. But the Bible is like going to a doctor, a good doctor. He'll tell you exactly what the problem is. He'll do a surgery on you, remove that thing that's torturing you and killing you. And a few days you'll be in the bed, then go home and live a life free and have the liberty. When you come to Jesus, my friend, you come to the best healer there is. He will show you what the problem is. You can get rid of the problem. Go home and live your life. So the darkness controls him. He doesn't know where he's going. He's governed by it. His happiness is governed by it. His life is governed by it. His day is governed by it. Thirdly, still talking about the unbeliever, description of the unbeliever, he's blinded in his eyes. That means he doesn't know the true nature of life. He doesn't know what life is. He doesn't know what man is. He doesn't know what life is. He doesn't know what sin is. He doesn't understand Jesus. He doesn't understand the gospel. He's blinded. Blinded means he cannot see these most important truths. What is man? 
Who are we? Where did we come from? Why are we here? Is there a God? What is he all about? Who is Jesus? He does nothing about it. He doesn't know that this life is going to end and when it ends, he's going to go to another place and one day he's going to stand before God in judgment and this judge is going to require of him answers as to how he spent his life and the good gifts he gave him. Did he glorify God with it? Did he do what God wanted and willed? Or has he lived his own life? He's got to answer. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand anything about his eternal destiny, where he's going and why he's here and all that. He doesn't understand life at all. He doesn't see the whole point of living. He just goes through life every day without even understanding why he's here, where he is from, and where he is going. What is the meaning of this life? He doesn't understand. He's blind. That's the person who's blind, my friend. Then fourthly, the unbeliever is a stumbling block. It says that here in verse uh, 1 John chapter 2 in that uh, in verse 10 I think it says chapter 2 verse 10 he who loves his brother and abides in the light and there is uh, loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. This is talking about a believer it says there is no cause for stumbling in him. That means with an unbeliever, there is always cause for stumbling in him. So he's a stumbling block, I would say. What do we mean when we say he's a stumbling block? Because of this unloving spirit that he has, this, in, this, this lack of capacity to love and walk in love, everything he comes into contact with is going to cause him to stumble. Because he's an unloving person. He causes others also stumble, uh, to stumble. You know. Because his unloving nature is always finding problems. Always finding troubles. Have you ever seen people? Wherever they go, there is trouble. Whatever they do, there is trouble. Wherever they go, whatever they do, there is trouble and problem. I remember a long time ago, I knew one fellow. He went there somewhere and got good beating somewhere. And he came home. And I thought everybody will be very sorrowful about uh, how this guy had been treated. And they'll go and see why this happened and so on. But everybody said, you know what everybody said? Everybody that worked with him said, we wanted to do that to him. Somebody else had done it. We are happy. You mean to say that, I said, you mean to say that this guy is doing like this every day here? And you're patiently putting up with him? The others, they are in the light, you see, so they're putting up with this guy. <laughs> He's constantly irritating them. And when he went and got in the wrong crowd, he got good beating. <laughs> because these people are like that. They are always people who stumble because they always find the problems they, they're like magnet that draw the problems and troubles to themselves. They see insults where no insult exists. You know. They're offended by every little thing. And uh, when you have such a person, have you ever met such a person? You all look like you don't meet people like that. You know. <laughs> and when you meet such a person, you also get tensed up because if you say this, then he will think that. If you do this, then he's going to misunderstand you. So you got to be very, when he comes home, you got to prepare your whole home, you know, what to say. You got to tell your wife, don't talk about that. <laughs> tell your children, don't even mention that. Don't bring that up because this guy is coming, you know. He'll upset the whole equation. The peace of the home will go, you know. That's what it's talking about. There is occasion for stumbling all the time for the guy. Because he's got that unloving spirit. There is no love. There's no capacity to love. He's walking with hate. He's walking with all, with all these hang-ups and excess baggage all over him, hanging over him. And wherever he goes, he invites troubles. He's finding some faults. And he's always finding insults where there is no ex insult existing. And it's causing other people also to stumble because they got to be careful with him. They got to cover up everything and all that and deal with him in a very special way and so on. Are you there? Now the believer. 
that's a description of the unbeliever the one in darkness this darkness is always problematic complicated people complicated nobody can satisfy them what is a believer like he is exactly the opposite of this person who is in darkness what is so different about him they are in a different realm they are in the light their eyes have been opened they have a purpose that is governing them not the circumstances they are governed by a purpose they are walking purposefully they are walking in the light therefore every step they take they take in the light they know where they are going they will surely reach their destiny every day is meaningful every breath is meaningful because their eyes have been opened to who they are they realize their sin and they realize that jesus is the answer they realize that the gospel is the solution so they have turned to christ and given their lives to the lord and something has happened in them they have been removed from the darkness from the realm of darkness and brought into light now they walk in the light and do the commandments of god they don't trip and stumble as they go and as they meet people in the world wherever they go there is peace even if they go to a place where there is trouble there will be peace because they went there they will calm the place down they will bring peace they will speak words of life they will speak calmness there they will speak serenity there they will the atmosphere will be filled with serenity when they are there and they will draw they will help people when they are with the people with others they'll bring out the best from them you know some people are good at bringing out the worst you don't ever want to get with them right <laughs> because you bring they bring out the worst they have a capacity to bring out the worst but christians are not like that they have the capacity to even when they move with a guy who is in darkness their light begins to shine on them the guy begins to see his life and begins to understand his whole approach to life he begins to begins to think about his own life just being with the person of light is like that it makes a difference a christian is such a person is always in the light they see the nature of sin and they know that sin and satan is what makes people hateful and uh, envious slaves to lusts and so on they understand why a person behaves like so they can even love a sinner they don't like what he does but they can understand why the guy is doing they can even feel sorry for him they can even feel they can pray for him they can even go and help him a true christian will not just criticize the sinner will not just put down the sinner saying that he is bad and so on what he will do is he will feel sorry and he will feel a compassion because he knows that he is a victim of sin and satan that he is suffering from these things because the devil has got him that we must pray for him that we must help him that we must do something about that that's the way the christian approaches he knows that he has been like that but now he's changed because of jesus christ if it was not for jesus he'll be just like him and so he reaches out to him that's what a christian is all about and as such a person god has put you and i in this world in this dark world in the midst of darkness god said you are the light of this world you stay here he said right when he prayed he said i'm praying not that you will take them from this world have you read that in john 17 some people haven't read that they're praying to go he said i am praying not that you will take them away from this world but keep them here i believe in that prayer so i've decided to stay <laughs> as long as possible keep them here to do what to shine the light of jesus christ wherever we go to bring the light into the dark world to be an influence in this world to bring peace wherever there is trouble and to bring light wherever light is needed by our words by our deeds by our very presence by the way that we are that's what he's talking about when you see such a person that is proof that he is born again 
not just a member, he's born again. Not just baptized, he's born again. He's got new life. He's Je he has Jesus. He's got this new life working in him. And that is a Christian. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is Sing praise, sing. 